Hi everyone, so today on Charlie's Mental Wealth, I'm gonna be focusing on moms, whether you have a significant other or you're a single mom who are dealing with depression and anxiety. So I'm gonna be providing tips and suggestions as to what you can do to help you relieve, help you decrease all those feelings and emotions so that you can start to feel better, okay? So let's get the video started. Now, the very first thing that I wanna suggest is it's important that before you try to not feel those feelings is process those feelings, talk to someone. If you could talk to a therapist or a coach and exploring and seeing as to why these feelings are occurring is super important, okay? And I'm always a super advocate about, yeah, you, if you don't wanna talk to a therapist, I completely understand, but talking to someone about it and figuring things out, as long as you find solutions and you find like why it's occurring, that's the, that's the key and main point, okay? So once you do that and you wanna start implementing copings and interventions, that's where I'm coming in okay that's where I'm gonna start providing suggestions so the very first thing that I would want to suggest is if you do have a significant other or even if you live with your family members or you live with friends and you have a child or children ask them if you can have a day for yourself it's important even if it's once a week if you can do it once a week depending on people's schedules it's okay but at least try to do it once a month that's something i always suggested to parents when i would provide services in the home for the children i always try to talk to the caregiver the mom the dad like it's important that you have your own day it is extremely important it's separately and together so figure out how you can do that and really advocate for yourself and say i need this <laughs> you know because it's important you need a day for yourself and when you do have a day for yourself or with your significant other just make sure that you do something that you love everybody's different some people like to do physical activities some people want to just do simple things some people want to get their nails done go boxing trying something different go golfing shooting a gun i don't know you know there's just so many things it really just depends on your personality but making sure that you have a day for yourself it's important another suggestion that I can give that involves that is even like telling them if it's okay for you to go to a hotel for a day like I remember I used to ask for that like hey you know I just want to go out and just be by myself like just be in a hotel room <laughs> and just relax and just watch TV because that's my type of like unwinding. So you could definitely try to do that or you could plan a day with your girlfriends. You know, if you want to do something where you just leave for 24 hours and you're doing something fun with your girlfriends, you could definitely do that too as well. So it just depends on what you're into, okay? Now, another suggestion is journaling. I know it's very cliche, we hear that all the time, but journaling makes a big difference because you actually get to write down how you feel, what you're thinking, and it's just, it's better, you know, it's, it makes you just, there's this like connection where you actually write it down. And then you can also do other interventions that when you write certain things down, you can burn it, you could do rituals, things like that. But journaling, it helps a lot. The reason why a lot of people suggest it is because it works. Now, if you don't want to journal, you could definitely do worksheets. If you're working with a coach, coach or a therapist or on your own if you can find worksheets go on the internet google worksheets about you know self-love or worksheets about x y and z uh, that's another way where you could kind of shift your way of writing things down or reflecting on certain things it doesn't have to be in a notebook but that's a, another option that you can do ask your coach ask your therapist can i start doing worksheets because i feel like you know i want to start journaling and that's going to pivot me to start to journal eventually so try that route too okay now another suggestion that I would provide is we have to go back to the basics so think about what you're eating what are you consuming what are you watching what are you hearing are you implementing exercise in your routine is there a way that you can do all that stuff and shift and change it makes a big difference especially because if we eat certain things it's gonna make us more sluggy it's gonna if we're eating too much sugar we're gonna crash all that stuff that just doesn't make us feel good. Now, I would encourage you to talk to a nutrition, talk to your doctor to see where you're at with your fiber and all that stuff, because everybody's different. And when it comes down to physical activity, there's a lot of studies out there that explain when you exercise, it releases those endorphins when you feel good. It's gonna be hard at first. You're not gonna feel motivated, but when you start to do it, you're eventually going to feel motivated. That's something that I learned as I've gotten older is that you're never gonna feel motivated. You have to force yourself, like I will force yourself to 
do those things and then eventually the ball is gonna just roll it's gonna roll so think about like i said think about what you're eating are you exercising what are you watching you know are you watching things that are making you feel like poo poo stop watching that stuff there are certain things that's not that just depending on where you're at with your self-esteem it's gonna make you feel worse so cut it out don't see it unfollow blog do what you gotta do to not watch and hear all that stuff that's gonna make you feel like caca and if it's people that are around you because sometimes it's not what you see and watch like purposely sometimes it's your environment so kind of assess your environment and see who's being negative are they always talking baloney are they always telling me things are they putting me down and this person always be and like it has to do with like who you're hanging around with sometimes it could be your family members sometimes it could be your friends sometimes it could be just acquaintances sometimes it could be in your work environment you know hearing people constantly being negative complaining talking behind people's back all that stuff drains like it just drains your energy so assess your environment see what's going on and if you could change certain things do it try your best to be vocal advocate for yourself let a person know about your boundaries like hey you know what i don't really want to talk about this i just i just it doesn't make me feel good I this is just I don't want to talk about this or can you please not let me know about this because it's just there's nothing that I can do like just be really respectful and nice because your energy and your aura matters and if it's affecting you that's gonna make a big difference and you're not feeling anxious and depressed another thing that I would recommend is I know for some of them it's kind of hard but asking for help at whatever capacity learning how to ask for help and if you have done it before and they don't really care or want to you're gonna have to figure out a way where you guys can meet in the middle because that's gonna start making you feel like poop too if, if you don't have the support or help that you need with certain circumstances certain tasks that you will need to do or just asking help for yourself is super important so asking for help if you're dealing with pride little by little the more that you do it the less prideful you're gonna be but it's important to ask for help when it's needed okay it's important don't put that aside now if you're having sleepy having trouble with sleeping and you're struggling with insomnia because depression and anxiety tends to do that by changing your diet and also adding exercise that's going to help a little bit but it's also really important that you work with someone as to what is it that you're thinking at night as to why you're like tossing and turning and not being able to fall asleep because until you resolve that it's going to make it a lot more easier for you to fall asleep now of course there's other alternatives of taking melatonin taking cbd but in time as time progresses sometime depending on your body you will become dependent on it and you're going to have to take more and then more and then more and then sometimes it gets to a point where it doesn't even work anymore so if you can like i said if you could talk to a professional talk to a coach or if somehow you can figure it out on your own, figure out why are you having these intrusive thoughts? Why are you worried? Figure out solutions, figure out resolutions, talk to yourself, practice a lot of self-talk. The main thing that I realized that help, has helped out a lot, especially when I would recommend it to people and then I started using it myself, is self-talk is super powerful. When you actually sit and talk to yourself, because a lot of the time, sometimes we distract ourselves with listening to music as a coping skill or we watch TV and we don't really sit in silence. It's important that you do. It's important that you practice at least once a week where you're just like, by yourself really think about things write it down process figure out solutions sit with the feeling so that when you're about to go to sleep you're not doing that because in a way you gotta think about it when you're asleep that's the only time your mind is quiet that's the only time where it's like Shh, you know there's no there's no sounds and all that stuff so that's why you have to do it before you go to sleep so that's why people recommend meditation so that's another thing that i would include is try to practice meditation the more that you do it and you find certain audio on the internet the more it's going to be easy and the more you're going to see the benefits of it okay another suggestion that i would provide is getting those like noise cancellation white noise type of devices where they might play the ocean or they might play birdies or or classical music sometimes that works if it helps you fall asleep try it out but like i said you have to find a time during the week or the day where you can actually meditate and sit in silence 
because we're constantly sometimes we're constantly being busy especially if we have a lot of kids to take care of and we're you know uh, a house a housewife and we're doing all kinds of things it is important that you have your time on your own to really sit and think and just process relax and just let it all out let it all out you got it just gotta filter dump that shit you know dump it <laughs> Another thing that you can also do is if you don't really do your makeup or your hair, doing something simple like that, like out of nowhere, just because, even if you're not going anywhere, just, and if you have time, I would say just make yourself feel good at whatever capacity. And if you can, have your own little photo shoot. You don't gotta buy, you don't have to have a photographer. Do it on your own. Our phones take amazing photos nowadays. You can set the timer. And if you can afford a photographer and you wanna do that, that's another suggestion that I would say because it totally improves like your self esteem. You see, like, wow, like I look the bomb, you know, I look good. Like, it doesn't have to be any special occasion and then in the end you could definitely include your family but do it for you first okay do it for you <laughs> do do what's gonna make you happy okay if you've tried everything and everything and nothing works it doesn't hurt for you to try something different you just never know as we get older we get kind of get bored we kind of the same thing applies with kids like i've always said that you have to switch it up you gotta change things do something that's gonna take you out of your comfort zone and then when you do it you're gonna feel so accomplished and that improves your self-esteem it makes you feel like i can do this you know and then that correlates to improving your depression and your anxiety too as well so do something different. If you feel stuck and you're like, well, I already did all this stuff and X, Y, and Z, do something different. Do something out of the box, out of the box. And do it with someone who has good vibes, who brings out the best out of you. Or another thing that you could also do is if you depend on people too much, do it alone. I always suggested that if your issue is with codependency and you have a lot of anxiety being alone, practice doing things on your own. Try to be more independent. Um, because remember, when you're put in uncomfortable situations, that's when you grow, that's when you flourish, that's when you evolve. So do things on your own if that's what you struggle with, okay? Oh, and I almost forgot too. If you've never done something when you were a child, this is your opportunity. Like this is your opportunity to like fulfill your childhood dreams, you know, because you might have the money, you might have the time, so do it. Whatever you didn't do as a child that makes you sad, you're like, man, I wish, I do it right now do it right now take that little inner childhood and just do it you know if it's coloring if it's going to disneyland if it's just anything that you that hurt you as a child and now that you, you could do it i would encourage you to do it now and that definitely helps a lot and lastly i've always recommended that watching hearing or seeing something funny helps a lot. In my experience, when I would feel like poop, what I would do is of course, you know, I gotta process my feelings and then afterwards to make myself feel better, I would put on like a comedian, I would put on like stand-up comedy and just laughing in general makes you feel good, you know? Or surround yourself with people who make you laugh. Do what you gotta do to bring laughter into your life. Don't avoid, that's the biggest thing. Avoidance is never gonna work. So you could try all these things and avoid and avoid and avoid. Eventually those feelings are gonna keep coming back. They're just gonna keep coming back. So that's why I always keep saying like, make sure that you process, you sit with the feeling, you figure out solutions, you kind of are self-aware about why you're feeling this way, why you continue to feel this way so that you can, like I said, find solutions or just kind of be at peace with certain things that you can't change so that you can then in turn practice your intervention and copy skills and then slowly as time goes on you're gonna feel less anxious and you're gonna feel less depressed okay so hopefully these tips helped out if you have any suggestions please leave them in the comments because the more that we share as i mentioned the more that we can help each other as a community it's it just helps us it helps a lot you know i've, I've had suggestions and and tips given to me by my supervisor i've learned on my own while just researching and then just on my own just figuring things out so but the more that we share stuff the more that we can help each other and heal and just just remember too we all have different ways of healing we all heal at different time frames don't pressure yourself don't be so hard on yourself take it easy okay everybody has their own journey and their own awakenings and epiphanies okay hopefully like i said this video helped out please share it with someone who's struggling with depression anxiety and wants some tips and hopefully everybody is having a good day. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and I'll talk to everybody later. Bye.